Once upon a time, in the heart of a bustling Nigerian market, there lived a young girl named Adaku. She had a deep passion for cooking and dreamed of preparing the most delicious meals for her customers. However, Adaku faced a challenge, her dishes lacked the magical touch that could make them truly extraordinary. Living in a modest home, she faced the harsh reality of a wicked stepmother and envious stepsisters who harbored a deep fear that Adaku's cooking skills would surpass their own and, worse yet, that she might open her restaurant and steal away all their customers. Every day, Adaku would gaze longingly at the kitchen, where the tantalizing aroma of spices and simmering stews wafted through the air. Her stepmother, however, was determined to keep Adaku away from the kitchen. Locked out of the kitchen, Adaku's dream seemed distant and unattainable. One day, while wandering through the market, Adaku overheard a conversation about the legendary talking pots of taste hidden in the dense forests of Kalaba. Adaku's heart raced with excitement as she overheard the conversation about the legendary talking pots of taste. It was said that these enchanted pot had the power to transform ordinary ingredients into the most delectable stews and soups. Unable to contain her curiosity, she approached the group gathered in the market, where an elderly woman named Maman Gozi seemed to be the fountain of information. With a warm smile, Adaku approached Maman Gozi and greeted her respectfully. Excuse me, Maman Gozi, she began. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation about the talking pots of taste in the Kalaba forest. Can you please share more details on how to get there? I'm eager to learn the secrets of these enchanted pots. Maman Gozi, intrigued by Adaku's enthusiasm, looked at her with a twinkle in her eyes. Ah, young one, the path to the Kalaba forest is not an easy one, but for those who seek the magic of the talking pots, it is a journey worth taking, she replied, her voice carrying the weight of wisdom and experience. You must approach the forest with sincerity and a genuine desire to learn, my dear, Maman Gozi advised. The talking pots can sense the intentions of those who seek their wisdom. Stay true to your purpose, and you shall find what you seek. Thanking Maman Gozi with gratitude, Adaku bid farewell to the market and prepared herself for the challenging journey to Kalaba Forest. Filled with excitement and a newfound sense of purpose, rushed home to share the incredible news with her stepmother and stepsisters. Bursting through the door, she couldn't contain her enthusiasm as she animatedly described the legendary talking pots of taste and her plan to embark on a journey to Kalaba Forest to learn their secrets. However, Instead of the support and encouragement she hoped for, Adaku was met with scorn and ridicule from her stepmother and stepsisters. They sneered at her dreams, belittling her aspirations with mocking laughter. Talking pots and enchanted forests. Ridiculous. You'll never amount to anything, Adaku, her stepmother scoffed, while her stepsisters joined in, echoing the derisive sentiment. Undeterred by their negativity, Adaku maintained her composure and resolve. She calmly explained that she believed in the magic of the talking pots and that this journey was crucial for her personal growth and culinary aspirations. Ignoring their taunts, she began packing her belongings, determined to follow her dreams despite the discouragement she faced at home. As she prepared to leave, Adaku's stepmother and stepsisters continued their disparaging remarks, attempting to plant seeds of doubt in her mind. However, Adaku, fueled by her passion and Maman Gozi's guidance, remained steadfast. With her bag slung over her shoulder and the talking pot's tails echoing in her heart, she bid farewell to the home that had confined her dreams for far too long. The journey to Kalaba Forest was arduous, with each step carrying the weight of both excitement and determination. Along the way, Adaku faced the challenges of the dense forest and strange noises of the forest, she spent many days and night finding the cave as described by Mamanuzi. Finally, she reached the cave where the talking pots of taste awaited. 
Greeting Adaku greeted with respect, my name is Adaku, daughter of late Mazi Azina of Eziite village in Inugu. I have heard tales of how have the power to transform ordinary ingredients into the most delectable stews and soups. That is why I have journey days and nights to seek your knowledge. The pot sensed Adaku's hardships, humility and respect and was eager to impart its wisdom to someone so passionate and resilient like her. Adaku spent weeks in the magical cave, under the guidance of the talking pots of taste. From the art of making traditional Igbo dishes to the flavors of Hausa, Yoruba, and various other tribal cuisines, day after day, she cooked tirelessly, experimenting with different ingredients and techniques. The pot served as patient teachers, offering valuable insights into the nuances of each dish. Adaku's determination and passion for learning were reflected in the savory aromas that filled the cave as she mastered the art of cooking. Not only did Adaku learn the intricacies of diverse African cuisines, but she also imbibed the pot's teachings on the importance of perseverance, kindness, and generosity in the kitchen and in life. Throughout her stay, Adaku developed a deep bond not only with the talking pots but also with the mystical creatures of the forest who aided her in gathering ingredients. Squirrels, birds, and even gentle woodland creatures became her companions, assisting her in collecting the finest herbs, spices, and vegetables for her culinary creations. As her time in the enchanted cave drew to a close, the talking pots presented Adaku with gifts as tokens of appreciation for her genuine spirit and relentless effort. They gifted her rare spices, enchanted cooking utensils, and a magical recipe book that contained the secrets of the forest's flavors. With a heart full of gratitude and a wealth of newfound knowledge, Adaku bid farewell to her enchanted friends. They assured her that the lessons she learned and the magic she discovered would stay with her forever. As she stepped out of the cave, the mystical creatures of the forest accompanied her, guiding her through the dense foliage one last time. Returning to her home, Adaku's culinary prowess had undergone a remarkable transformation. She used the money she was gifted to open up her own restaurant. Her restaurant became a haven for those seeking not only delicious food but also a touch of special delicacy from around the whole of Nigeria. Adaku's stepsisters and stepmother, driven by jealousy and resentment, decided to send her own children to the mystical cave to learn the secrets of the talking pots of taste. Fueled by a desire to surpass Adaku in both knowledge and wealth, the children ventured into the dense forest with arrogance and entitlement. However, the forest, sensing their negative energy, was not as welcoming to them as it had been to Adaku. The children faced numerous challenges along the way, from the buzzing sting of bees to the wrath of an angry fox, their journey was marked by rudeness and arrogance, traits that did not go unnoticed by the mystical creatures dwelling in the forest. Upon reaching the cave, the children, emboldened by their entitlement, barged in without seeking permission. In stark contrast to Adaku's humble and respectful approach, they demanded to be taught the same secrets the pots had shared with their aunt. The pots, sensing their arrogance and lack of sincerity, responded with displeasure. Filled with anger, the head pot, remembering the kindness and humility of Adaku, ordered her little animal friends to intervene. Squirrels, birds, and woodland creatures gathered and, with a swift but gentle force, escorted the rude intruders out of the cave. The animals, guided by the wisdom of the talking pots, made it clear that the magic of the forest was reserved for those who approached with genuine hearts and a willingness to learn. Defeated and disappointed, Adaku's children trudged back home, realizing that their entitlement and arrogance had cost them the opportunity to gain the invaluable knowledge the talking pots had to offer. Meanwhile, the mystical creatures of the forest returned to their peaceful abode, and the cave remained a sanctuary for those who sought the magic of cooking with a humble and open heart. Adaku, unaware of her stepsisters and stepmother's ill-fated attempt, continued to share her culinary magic with the community, embracing the lessons of the talking pots and fostering a spirit of generosity and kindness in her restaurant.